Hello, brother. It's Dave again, and this is going to be another attempt to uh, to answer this uh, this question that I've received in my comments. I just made a video when I realized I think I missed half of the question, basically. So this video was dedicated to the discussion of income tax and taxes generally in Japan. <clears throat> and so the question in my comments section was, let's head over here. Um, I'm also from BC, and I was wondering how you file Canadian income tax. I'll be teaching on a 13-month contract, so I believe my Japanese income tax rate will be 5%, which is lower than what I would have to pay in Canada. So why do I have to pay the remaining amount to Canada during the personal income tax season? Would this all be done online? So the first thing to be immediately aware of when dealing with taxes, as they are all... I believe the term is prorated and so you're only paying tax on a previous year's income so if you are in the year 2014 and you are in that tax cycle at the end of it you're going to pay for 2013 in 2015 you will pay for 2014 in 2016 you will pay for 2015 the way that this impacts you when you come to Japan is that because you've only been here for one year and have no previous year's income, there is nothing to be taxed on. So in your first year here in Japan, you are not going to see any sort of income tax, municipal tax, um, prefectural tax, anything like that. So to answer the question regarding Canada, for whatever period of time you were working in Canada, prior to coming to Japan. So if you leave Canada in 2013 to come and work for the 2014 tax cycle in Japan, you would, when you would expect in Canada, when it comes up for the tax season around April or May, you would be paying on 2013 at the end of the 2014 cycle in Japan. So when you finished your first year in Japan, there would be those taxes to pay for 2013 in Canada. And yes, I believe you can now do this all online. So to answer your question, yes, I think that you can do that online. Um, I just wanted to first kind of orient yourself as to what period of time you would be paying for exactly. And it's always that year prior that you've completed that you would pay for not the one that you're currently in. When that one current, when the one you're in finishes, you will pay that in the following year. Uh, and then, as I've already explained, how that relates then to Japan, that you will not start paying this income tax until you did continue onwards to a second year. Now, beyond that, making this real simple, straightforward, better than the previous attempts at this video, um, to talk about Japanese income tax rates. Now, I was under the same impression when I came over that Japanese income tax is 5%, and that is a shadow of Canadian income tax, which is really, really beneficial. So it was a perspective, a big plus one for me, because I thought, you know, not only am I going to make a decent wage, I can actually add a significant amount of money onto that wage because I would not be able to receive that in Canada. It would be taxed away from me. So you're actually not making, you know, 29,000. It's more like you're making 33,000 because in Canada, it would take you that additional amount before you would actually see that money in your bank. But I digress. So when you come to Japan, the first tax bracket is 5%, but bear in mind, that is if you make less than 1.95 million yen. Now, easy conversion over into Canadian dollars, roughly 100,000 yen is 1,000 Canadian dollars. This then means if you're making 1.95 million yen, you are roughly in Canadian dollars making $19,500. Now, when you come over to do the job, that you are hired to do to work in the board of, with the Board of Education work in schools, your income is going to be much higher than that. Your income is going to range somewhere between twenty eight to 33000 And as a result of that, you are then bumped into the higher income tax bracket. So that places you at from 1.95 to 3.3, 3, 
you are at a 10% taxable income. So not five, but 10. And this may sound all like doom and gloom, but only maybe. Because even compared to Canada, that's still less, I believe. I'm not going to look that figure up, but I'm pretty sure that if you make, you know, between the 22 to 33,000, that in Canada they would be taking away 20%, I think. 18, 20%, 15. I don't know. It's less here. That's the point. That's the benefit that you have. So be aware of that. Not likely 5%, it'll be 10%. Um, in addition to that, much like Canada has CCP and EI and all these lovely abbreviations that then withdraw more money from our money, um, you do get a few of those in Japan as well. So you get additionally prefectural income tax rates. The one good thing about these income tax rates is that they are not bracket dependent. So when you pay this amount, you're going to pay this flat amount and it wouldn't matter if you were to go up or down. It's always that same amount. So prefectural income tax rates are 4%. So now you're at 14%. Then beyond that, you have municipal income tax rates, meaning the town that you've ended up in will be an additional 6%. So an additional 10% six plus the four on top of the 10 that you're paying for your income tax. So you come to about 20%. And this of course will only be paid if you are then in that following year that they know to charge you based on the previous year's income. So there you have it. That's a little, uh, I hope, simply put uh, explanation of the income tax rates and what you would likely be paying uh, were you to come over to Japan in the process, I believe, like you asked, yes, I think you can do the Canadian part of the process dealing with that previous year's income online. So, yeah, that's it. Like I like to say, or we'll get to that in a moment, down below I always put my contact information. So if you should have any questions about teaching in Japan, um, life in general, anything, really contact me. I'll make a video about it. I'll do my best to answer. I hope this is helpful. Um, like, subscribe, share, because that helps me reach a broader audience. A broader, a broader audience, and so I'm able to help more people. And uh, now, like I like to say, until we meet again next time, world, thanks for tripping with Dave. Ciao for now. Peace.